So uh, it's really our pleasure to have Yannick here from John Hopkins University, who is going to talk about parabolic gluing and construction of low solutions. Please. Well, thanks a lot uh, for the invitation. This is very nice. Hopefully, the next time it's going to be in person, as we were saying in French. Um, so what I would like to discuss actually uh, today is uh, some sort of very classical problem for parabolic equation. But uh, uh, in recent years, there have been like some, some uh, new techniques uh, developed, uh, uh, very much inspired by techniques coming from elliptic problems to construct like blow up solutions. So um, I will try like to give uh, some sort of uh, the type, the typical statements that one expect and, and uh, one wants to prove. And uh, I will also like uh, give some examples and uh, about this bubbling phenomena and uh, blow up solutions. So, <clears throat> so the idea is to construct blow up solution for parabolic problems in finite or infinite time. So of course, like uh, whenever uh, um, you have, uh, I mean, for parabolic equation, usually like you, I mean, you have like blow up in finite time or global well poseness. Well, actually you, you could have also like in some equations like instantaneous blow up, but uh, let's, uh, let's take the classical dichotomy. And if you have global well poseness, two things can happen. Either like you have convergence, in, in, in infinite time. So this is a case of the Yamabe flow, for example, on closed uh, manifolds. I'll come back to that later. Or you have blow up in infinite time. And uh, so it happens, for example, for the harmonic map heat flow. I will come back to that also, at least for some targets. The Fujita equation. So what I call the Fujita equation is like the semi-linear heat equation. And so basically the idea of, of um, the parabolic gluing, which is very much inspired by uh, bubbling phenomena, um, I mean, gluing techniques developed for in uh, elliptic equations, particularly to construct new geometric objects, is, uh, is uh, so the idea is like basically like uh, you, 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 have you construct a, a blob solution by coupling an inner and an outer problem. So basically, like, um, <clears throat> let me let me kind of sketch very briefly what is a general strategy before like going uh, to some examples. So you start with a good approximation, uh, which would give you like a small error, a good approximation of you ex what you expect to be like a, a blow up solution, and then basically you write an ansatz, an a priori ansatz of the form and approximate this approximation plus a perturbation. So eta r here is like uh, localized at, at a blow up point. So this is the inner part and uh, uh, it's the cutoff function and the outer part. Uh, so the inner problem, uh, so you're gonna have like two problems which are coupled, like first the inner problem. So you have like a, li a linear operator L which is basically the linearization around the uh, approximation up to some additional terms possibly, and uh, uh, coupled with uh, an outer problem. Um, um, so th the coupling being through this function psi for the inner problem and, uh, and, and phi here and this term here. And basically is, uh, the idea, so it's gonna become like a clear hopefully a little bit uh, later. Um, uh, the idea is that like you solve first the outer problem, then the inner, pro uh, the inner problem. And the thing is that here you, you notice that you have like two types of parameters somehow, zeta of t and lambda of t. Lambda of t would be like the blow up rate, so to speak. And uh, zeta of t is, the way you approach the blow up point in space. So when you have like this type of, of uh, non-homogeneous problem, like uh, of course, like as you would have like in, like in many problems, like you would you need to satisfy some orthogonality conditions for the linear, for the inner problem, which would give you exactly what you expect to be for lambda t and psi of t. And uh, so basically at the end of the game, you, you, if you have a nice um, 
a linear theory, you can run like a standard fixed point argument, which allows to solve like completely your equation in the sense that you find the function phi m psi so that like in some t go, going to capital T finite or t going to infinity gives you like a very precise description on the way you blow up. So this type of technique actually like, like oh, this type of strategy, I should say, like is very like a classical strategy. Like for example, in differential geometry, when you want to construct connected sums between two manifolds, this is exactly the type of strategy that you do. You're gonna have a neck where you glue the two manifolds and then outside of the neck, you have like this outer problem. So the neck plays the role of the inner problem, the outer and, uh, and um, outside of the neck, the outer problem. You have also this type of thing when you look at bubbling solutions of, of, uh, of, uh, of elliptic problem. By bubbling, I mean like a solution, which is like whenever the parameter epsilon is going to zero, you, uh, you blow up to, uh, you, I mean, your solution converges to something which is a zero, everywhere except at a finite number of points and the Dirac mass, I mean, concentration at this given point. So this is like all this technique of, of gluing has been developed over decades. I mean, it's been known for decades, like uh, in, in elliptic problem here, like the new thing is that it's, adapted, it's pretty well adapted to parabolic problem, I insist on you are looking for really like pointwise estimates. So this means that you need to have some sort of decay to solve actually the linear equation. And this type of thing cannot work the way I just described it, like, like roughly. Uh, if you look at uh, Schrodinger or wave equation for which you don't have a priori decay. So you need, in these cases, to develop like a, an LP theory of a gluing, which is not yet available, or use other type of technique like a, uh, Pierre Raphael, Atemzag, like Frank Mel has been developing to deal with this type of equation. So here I'm going to concentrate only on parabolic problems. Okay, so let me let me describe some um, some equation that I would like to. Uh, to talk to uh, to talk about so let's let's the question that I like a lot which is the Yamabe flow uh, so <clears throat> this is like let's take a domain a, a smooth bounded domain in uh, in dimension now at least uh, three and let's consider the fast diffusion equation here so you have like a homogeneous Dirichlet and m is fast diffusion so it's less than one. And so if you expand the Laplacian into divergence of gradient, it gives you a singular but not degenerate parabolic equation. So actually by classical theory, you can open any book that you want, uh, you have a unique positive uh, classical solution, which is actually vanishes, so instinct, in a finite time. Um, so basically, like if you are like, so the idea in this type of problem would be to understand what is the profile close to the extension time, right? <coughs> um, so a, a lot of people uh, have been like looking, for example, in some regime when M is above the inverse of the Sobol F exponent up to one, for instance, and omega is just like the ball in Rn. Uh, classical work of Berryman and Holland proved that the solution near the extension time uh, uh, satisfies a separated like uh, variable uh, self-similar form, okay, where S is like a, a ground state, like a solution of the of the of the stationary uh, equation. Whenever M is uh, strictly less than the inverse of the Sobol F exponent up to zero. This is much more complicated and actually like there are some formal asymptotics that I will not describe, which are like uh, based on, on paper by, uh, by Galakionov and, and uh, John King. The thing is that let's look because I'm more interested in this problem to the geometric one, which is the one whenever M here in my equation is exactly the inverse of the critical Sobol F exponent, so N minus two over n plus, plus two. Remember that n is bigger than three, okay? 
for any on the on the on the into the uh, this an exponential uh, nonlinearity popping up. Um, so actually, you can perform like a kind of like classical now transformation, and this problem that I was mentioning before here becomes under this transformation a Yamabe type equation on omega, where omega is your smooth bounded domain in Rn. And uh, here I denote it P, uh, the inverse of what I was calling MS. So P is actually the critical uh, uh, equation, right? The critical um, Sobolev exponent, sorry. So since you are interested into a geometric somehow uh, problem, because you have in mind like what's happening on manifolds, so you take a positive uh, initial uh, initial data, uh, which is like uh, satisfying your boundary condition uh, zero, and you try to uh, because you have like pushed the extinction time through this transformation at infinity, right? This is I remind you that capital T is the extinction time. Then since you have pushed the extinction time at plus infinity, okay. So you can prove that you have actually like a global, uh, a global in time solution, okay, and you want to understand what is asymptotic behavior when t goes to infinity. Well, um, as I was saying at the beginning, uh, if you want a closed manifold, okay, by closed I mean uh, compact without boundary. Um, you have convergence of the flow, okay. So this is so. Let me. Let, well, okay, let, so I will have, give some reference. Uh, but uh, here you are in a bounded domain. So the fact that you have a boundary, okay, is introducing new phenomenon. And actually, in particular, you don't have convergence, but blow up at, uh, at plus infinity. So to introduce the result that I want uh, to, uh, to show you, like, uh, let me uh, just introduce some notation. So you call H like the regular part of the green function in the domain omega, the green function of the Laplacian. So it's by definition an harmonic function which is satisfying the fundamental, which is equal to the fundamental solution on the boundary. And you pick K different, uh, but fixed point in omega and you define this like a horrible matrix, okay? so. Okay, so involving the green function itself and uh, the, the regular part of the green function, actually, like since it's at the same point. <coughs> so basically, what we prove with the junction way and the uh, Yuxian Zhang is that whenever you are in dimension bigger than three and uh, you pick k points in your domain fixed, okay. Um, and such that this matrix is positive definite, then you can always construct an initial data u naught and uh, the three smooth function mu g of mu j of t psi j of t and phi here, so that the the, the 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 solution has this form. So it's a bunch of bubbles, right? Where mu j describes the rate of blow up, and psi j describe the way you reach the blow up point q j. So you see what what is like a, so and phi is like away from a, from a, from a, the blow up point q i q k is a going to zero uniformly. So so you see like a, you really show that you can find an initial data so that whenever t is going to infinity asymptotically you, you look like this term okay so why are these uh, these uh, these uh, uh, functions here which seem to be strange appearing well if you remind if you recall the equation a stationary solution of this equation is Laplace u equal to uh, up to sines u to the p, where p is equal to n plus two over n minus two. And if you look at the solution in Rn of that, this is these solutions are given here. This, they are rescaled in time and translated in space as different, uh, given by the Yamabe bubbles. They are all classified whenever they are smooth and positive by kind of deep result of Caffarelli-Gilash and Sprague. 
So here you have a correction here, which is due to the fact that uh, these solutions are not solution of your equation, stationary equation in omega, but in Rn, okay? So he, that's why you need to project to take into account the boundary condition. But the basic idea is that like your solution is bubbling at infinity, like a bunch, and this bunch is the number of bubbles you want, a bunch of, uh, of uh, Yamabe bubbles, which are scale, scaled, and uh, and uh, translated possibly okay so of course like this problem that i was mentioning is is like a really like a geometric one and and initially and uh, so the yamabe flow uh, was introduced by hamilton um, whenever like he was actually when one of his papers where he introduced like the the G flow and uh, so the Yamabe flow in 2D and G flow in 2D are the same. And actually, like if you use uh, uh, the fact that you have the, the, the Sobol F exponent here, makes the equation. So here, this is the Yamabe flow on the sphere, makes the equation conformally invariant. So you can always uh, um, apply a stereographic projection followed by a a classical so that like you have exactly the equation that I was looking at here you are like in SN okay so the stereographic projection up to extension to zero is is uh, giving you an RN so this this problem whenever you are on a closed uh, manifold has been completely solved as far as global existence and convergence is concerned uh, by a series of works finishing with uh, Simon Brandle, a series of work by Simon Brandle, where they prove that whenever closed manifold, you take any of them smooth, you start uh, with an initial data, which is uh, nice, then you converge to actually uh, uh, like uh, uh, a solution of the gamma problem. So you converge to a stationary um, equation, which has like, uh, Sorry, you converge to a stationary um, equation of this problem, okay, on a, on a manifold, on the manifold, which means that uh, you converge to a metric of constant scalar curvature. So it's uh, the parabolic proof of, uh, of uh, the, the Yamabe solution, the Yamabe problem solution by uh, Aubin uh, and Shane. So the thing is that here I'm in different like situation because of course I'm not on a closed manifold. I am in a bounded domain, right? That's why I allow, I have actually like uh, infinite time uh, blow up. So <clears throat> when the first study that I'm aware of uh, in this particular like particularly equation, particular equation on, uh, close to the extension time is, is a, is a paper by Del Pino and Saez using very much like some uh, kind of uh, very strong Arnak inequalities uh, by Ru Yang Yu. And they prove that indeed, close to the extinction time, you look like a Yamabe bubble. So, exactly uh, this type of, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, bubble. But if you are interested by more sophisticated uh, um, uh, problems or more sophisticated solutions, which are like, for example, given by bubble towers. So basically you want like, a, you fix number of bubble and, and you want to construct a, a, like a, a blow up, a bubbling solution, uh, uh, which is given by a superposition at the same point of, of all of these bubbles. So there is a, an extremely nice paper by Daskalopoulos, Totti Daskalopoulos, uh, Manuel Elpino and Natasha Stresu, where they constructed a new class of type two ancient solutions, because of course, like if you are in positive time, the Yamabe flow is always converging. Uh, ancient solution, which are rotationally symmetric, they converge at minus infinity to tower spheres. So you see like the picture is like, whenever you approach like uh, minus infinity, it's an ancient solution. So it's solution defined from minus infinity to capital T, say. Um, so you are you are looking light like like a bunch of, uh, of of towers of spheres. This type of 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 uh, of uh, solutions have been always constructed pretty recently for the what I called like uh, the critical the, the Fujita equation whenever so the semilinear heat equation. The energy critical semilinear heat equation. Here it's very important 
for the construction. Though, I mean, this type of, I mean, like you can construct analog analogs of uh, solutions like other types of solutions, but uh, it's very important to be like in the, what I call the conformally invariant case. So the geometric equation with so the exponent being n plus two over n minus two, okay? So we conjecture that the, the, this bubble tower solution should also occur for the Yamabe flow, so my equation here, in a bounded domain. But we didn't like uh, the paper was long enough. And uh, so, but I mean, you know, now there are techniques and this solution would be pretty new uh, in, uh, in infinite time also. So, so this is like the classical, I mean, somehow like this, what I just described uh, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, typically like, and in particular, this type of result is typically what I want to prove for other types of equation for which either this type of solution has been constructed, blow up solution has been constructed in finite time or in infinite time, but, but for many of them in classes of, uh, of uh, symmetric solutions. The good thing with the parabolic gluing is that uh, you can actually avoid uh, uh, any kind of a priori symmetry any kind of equivalent symmetry. But once again, it works very well for parabolic equation because the parabolic theory allows you to have decay. It's not at all easy to figure out like an analog of this, uh, this uh, type of uh, procedure whenever, type of, whenever you are like looking at uh, uh, um, dispersive or nonlinear waves equations, for instance, or other types of equations for which you don't have decay in space. So one one um, other important like um, uh, flow geometric flow are the heat flows of uh, harmonic maps. So before going to the heat flow, let me discuss like very briefly. Um, uh, what are harmonic maps? So basically, you are looking at critical points in, in general of uh, this functional. Okay, omega, let's take omega to be a, like a bounded domain in R2, okay, and the target to be the sphere. So actually, when you look at the Euler Lagrange equation, you get like this kind of complicated equation. And uh, a major issue for this equation, well, there are two major issues first, the existence and uh, the regularity. Uh, but in 2D, you can prove that uh, all sol weak solutions of this equation are like um, smooth. And uh, in a higher dimension, you only have like uh, partial regularity. The reason why this system of equation, because U is target value, is, is a vector value, right? It's in SL. Um, so modulus of U is equal to one. The difficulty is that like, uh, if you take a weak solution, U being bounded because it's of modulus one and uh, U being H1, this, is, this term is only L1. So you are, you are like, like uh, borderline for calderon Zygmunt theory, okay? So you cannot infer from the Lagrange equation in a cheap way, the regularity of the solution. So the breakthrough came actually with uh, a, an extremely important work by Elin in the 90s, we prove that you have like a compensated compactness, actually a phenomenon coming from the structure of the right hand side. So the, the, I mean, it, there is a lot of thing like to say about it, but this is not the topic here. So what, as I was mentioning, a, a major issue because of um, the conformal invariance in 2D of the equation is to construct actually maps also. And one way to construct map, is, this is the first actually example I know of, of I'm aware of, of uh, 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 the construction of an object uh, using radio gradient flow. Uh, so this is like so-called harmonic map heat flow. It was introduced in a very famous paper in the 60s or 50s by Eels and Samson where basically you look at the gradient flow of this functional and uh, you, uh, in the L2 gradient flow, and you try to say, okay, I'm, I'm giving possibly a domain omega, or I'm starting from a closed manifold or closed surface. 
and uh, uh, I look at uh, uh, what are like uh, like in, in if provided I have like uh, some global existence or something like that, do I convert to an harmonic map whenever uh, so stationary solution whenever t is going to infinity? Well, it happens that uh, the answer is a no when you have like the target to be the sphere. Uh, and uh, but if the the target in, instead of being a sphere here is like a negatively curved manifold, uh, so so um, take like a, a, a like a, a closed manifold whose whole sectional curvatures are non positive, then uh, you can prove that the flow is globally defined and converges to an harmonic map from your domain into this uh, negative curvature uh, manifold. Navigatively curved manifold. So, in the case of the sphere, this is not what is happening. Actually, you have only by a series of results of Chen and Chen and Struve and many people after, only uh, um, a partial regularity. And in particular, in 2D, what you can prove is that you, uh, you blow up at a finite number of singular times, which is like Ricci flow in 3D. And so you can push the, somehow like a, because you have a finite number of surgeries to do. You can push like a, the the you can continue the weak solution, and then at infinity at plus infinity you actually blow up. Uh, so the important thing in this kind of phenomenon, which is like extremely, I should say, uh, um, a feature of uh, of a critical problems so, of critical in the sense that uh, you are dealing with a conformally invariant uh, problem, a very important like uh, uh, thing is to do a singularity analysis. So, uh, so how does uh, the, 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 the solution like uh, look, what does the solution look like uh, whenever you approach the singular time? Okay, so if you have a finite time blow up the first time where the continuity breaks in your in your flow here right um what you can what after the work of many people uh what you can prove is that there is a sequence of time such that you you blow up at k different points in omega and by bubbling so by bubbling means that you look like uh a stationary harmonic map, an harmonic map which is like a like an harmonic sphere, and uh, uh, and plus something you not which is actually a smooth map, and uh, if you if you uh, uh, so what is this UI that I was mentioning? These are finite energy entire harmonic maps, right? Uh, and they're all classified and actually like they are even like uh, you have a quantization effect. So the thing is that, like, um, what is, I mean, for those of you who are familiar with uh, with uh, concentration compactness, this is exactly the Struve uh, global compactness result for the critical uh, elliptic equation, or uh, you know, though, or like uh, uh, even like uh, a version of the profile decomposition. Um, and this is once again a feature of of uh, of conformally invariant um, problems. So, uh, Yannick, uh, uh, hello. I, I have a question. I mean, yes, sure. it, it applies to this result also to the previous one. To, to what extent you have uh, any kind of continuity of this uh, of this asymptotics? Meaning, if you perturb the initial data in a little bit. What can you say? Can you say anything about? Okay, so so oh, you mean like of the profile decomposition? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I'm not I think like the points. The points appearing in the profile, the lambda and I. I, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I I see what you mean. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, Okay, so I'm not sure that uh, how it's been worked out how much like the, the profile decomposition depend uh, uh, on the initial data. Uh, 
even I the see. previous result, even the previous result you the, that you gave, um, I think. Oh, about, you mean like a, like like like. Uh, yeah, this one also same. Yes, same you question. can you can you can you can prove some stability result uh, up to could I mention finite could I mention set of initial data. So so you can prove that if you perturb. A little bit this initial data you still have uh, you're gonna have like a, ver a, a version of that which is uh which is uh, just a uh, term yes you can prove some sort of stability yes yeah. with uh, like the mu j, yes, yes. j like varying a little bit right yeah yeah for the on, on some co-dimension so but if you go away from that yes uh, you, do, you no, don't know I, I, yeah yeah you don't know yeah yeah. yeah, so yeah. basically it is unstable. It is unstable unless yeah, you are this is like a, yes, these are like unstable. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. But it is expected to be unstable because most likely the stable one is that you have only one, right? Yes, yes, yes. Exactly, okay. exactly. I agree with you. It's expected to be unstable. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Um yeah, so basically the, the singularity analysis, right, is just telling you that as measures, <laughs> your solution, well, your solution is of modulus one, so it's bounded, so it has the gradient which has to concentrate. And so, so, so the density of the solution, right, along a sequence of time is, uh, there should be like the Lebesgue measure here, is going to the density of a smooth map and uh, uh, finitely many, uh, uh, direct masses with multiplicity mi. So the thing is that, like, <coughs> this type of thing is a some sort of I I wouldn't say soft, but uh, you can. I mean, now there are many ways to get like profile decompositions. Okay, and uh, uh, the thing is that it doesn't tell you the way the you blow. It doesn't tell you if type one or type two. The thing is that, for example. Uh, topping found that the blob rates here in my profile decomposition, lambda i n, are of this type. So, which is not the one given by the ODE. So, it's a, it's a, it's a blow up which is of type two. So, it does not occur in a self similar rate. And uh, let me also mention that uh, the this type of profile decomposition holds also in infinite time, okay? So actually there have been like constructing blow up solutions of, 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 uh, of um, harmonic map flow. So the first result I am aware of is a very famous paper of Casey Chang, uh, Ding and, and uh, Guang Yu constructed like in, in the class of in the disk like blow up solution. Then many years after, there is a very nice paper of Raphael and Schweier constructed rigorously a blow-up solution, but assuming symmetry. And then uh, uh, um, a recent paper of uh, Davila del Pino and Way constructed blow-up solutions like in a non-symmetric case. So there, I mean, like I'm just quoting like kind of uh, there are many more people who worked on this problem uh, and so on. So it's just like about like the kind of highlights for, for the construction of blow up solutions per se. So what I would like to discuss a little bit is uh, a variation of this problem of harmonic maps here. When you allow your initial manifold or domain manifold to be a manifold with boundary. So the harmonic map equation usually like uh, is is uh, studied uh, here. I put a domain because I was just into analytical properties. But uh, geometrically, you start from a closed manifold into a closed manifold. Uh, so the domain is a closed manifold, so in particular without boundary, and the target is a closed manifold uh, with uh, without boundary also. Here. Uh, what happens when you have whenever you have a boundary for the domain? Well, when you have whenever you have a boundary on the domain, um, the geometric problem will change because you have, of course, to take into account uh, uh, the boundary itself, right? And uh, uh, the thing is that the fact that you are targeted into a manifold uh, 
forces like uh, the boundary condition to be on a geomet geometric uh, way. So let me say right away what is like the, 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 the Euler Lagrange equation. So here, the first equation, this system, okay? So remind, I mean, the setting that U is going from a map with boundary into a manifold, sorry, with boundary into a, a, sub, a, a manifold without boundary and sigma, okay, is a sub-manifold without boundary either. So take, think about, for example, the target N to be the sphere S2, S3, and sigma to be S1, okay? So the, the, the geometric problem is the following. So you would have like the, the, the harmonic map equation this is the first equation. So if you take if the target is a sphere, this is just minus Laplace U equal to gradient U squared times U. Then you want, so the, 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 the term uh, uh, free boundary is uh, some sort of- uh, uh, Capital yeah. gamma is second fundamental form, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so capital gamma is second fundamental form of the embedding of, of the Nash embedding of N into uh, like uh, an Euclidean space. So that's why like if you want to simplify uh, the problem, think about like the sphere and you, 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 you take, instead of taking gamma, you, you see it just as the hypersurface uh, in, in uh, the sphere SL as in hypersurface in, in RL plus one. And you 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 have like minus Laplace U equal to gradient U squared times U, like exactly the same equation as before, except that now you have to take into account the fact that the, the domain has a boundary. So what the, the, the geometric problem, which is called harmonic map with free boundary, is is uh, looking at is like you you want to constrain that the image of the boundary of the domain lies in the sub manifold of the target and uh, and this is a geometric boundary condition the the, the the Neumann derivative on the domain on the on the boundary of the domain has to be orthogonal to the tangent space at this at u and sigma so you see like you have like a system which is highly nonlinear you have a nonlinearity inside the equation and a nonlinearity on the boundary so the term, the term of free boundary is not exactly, this is not what I call, would call free boundary. It's more of a constraint actually problem with a nonlinear constraint, okay? Because you got constraint that, okay, I want to map the, 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 the domain of, the, 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 sorry, the boundary of my domain into a submanifold, into sigma, which is a submanifold of the target. So you have like basically two uh, ambient spaces, right? You have the ambient space. Well, of course you have the domain and then in the target, you have two uh, ambient spaces somehow. N, which is like the big one and Sigma, which is like the small one, if you want. Sigma is like uh, where you, you, you put your constraint, right? So, this is like when you do like the computation, very formal computations, you can all, I mean, you, you, you have also like, a, like a, I mean, it's a very natural system to consider somehow. Uh, of course, like in exactly the same way as you had like, like a, a, a heat flow to, a, to, a, to kind of construct like one of these maps, you have a, uh, in the harmonic map, uh, classical harmonic map problem, you have also a heat flow for the for the for the harmonic map with free boundary. But now, like the the, the you see, like you are like like uh, like uh, at the parabolic level, your system can be very very nonlinear, right? Because like uh, uh, you have like no, not only the nonlinearity inside once again, but the 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 nonlinear the boundary condition is also nonlinear. Okay. Um, so why doing that? Well, besides like the mathematical interest, like analytical interest of uh, of uh, of um, having like uh, harmonic maps with uh, with when the, the domain has boundary, actually these maps appear in a crucial way. Uh, 
in several um, geometric applications. Uh, so there's been a revival recently because of a series of important works by Ilana Fraser and Shane. And they appear actually, these maps appear as uh, uh, in, to be instrumental in, 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 uh, in um, extremal eigenvalues, extremal metrics for, for, for state law of eigenvalues. So basically, they appear as uh, describing what are the metrics given in a conformal class, which are like maximizing some, uh, some uh, lambda i or lambda one of the state law problem. So with manifold with free boundary. And um, what is manifold with boundary? Um, and actually, like geometrically, they appear also something which is very natural to look at, which are minimal surfaces with free boundary. Uh, as you might know, like harmonic maps are a way to construct minimal surfaces. And uh, harmonic map with free boundary are, uh, are a way also uh, to construct minimal surfaces with free boundary. Which has been studied by, by many people going back to the 50s and so on. And so then you could ask, okay, well, let's look at what's happening to the to the to this flow, right? Um, so basically, like uh, in a kind of late 90s paper of uh, Yunnan Chen Fang Hualin, they have the following. Well, let's take the domain to be a domain in R2, the target to be like uh, an Euclidean space is, and sigma being a submanifold of Rn of the target. Can we find uh, an initial smooth data uh, such that this problem has a non uh, like as blow up solution in finite time? You know, like if you have in mind, if you keep in mind the 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 harmonic map heat flow, you cannot. Uh, avoid uh, whenever the target even is a sphere, you cannot avoid uh, finite time blow up. Okay, you don't have finite time blow up if you have a negatively curved target, but you have a finite time blow up for 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 well for the sphere, for example. This is like uh, the 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 chunking and your uh, result. Well. The thing is that when this flow of uh, harmonic map with free boundary started to be investigated, the first people proved like uh, some kind of a soft result of partial regularity of the flow, exactly like. And then they were interested in uh, the singularity formation for this flow. Uh, well, and then so Chen and Lin raised in their paper uh, this question. So basically, the, the system. We look at is a, we're going to look at is a, is the following. So you take a M to be the half plane, okay? Sigma to be S one, okay? And then your equation becomes you are caloric. The heat equation in the half plane. This is a free boundary condition. The image of the boundary of the half plane you want to to uh, stay in that into S one the circle. And you have this uh, this uh, this funky boundary condition. Okay, this like uh, so I got rid of the nonlinearity inside my equation, but I, I have of course the geometric nonlinearity on on the boundary right of the of the half plane. Well, the answer is that yes, you can construct exactly uh, like non-trivial uh, um, uh, like uh, non-trivial um, uh, blow up solution by using the inner outer parabolic gluing. So it gives a positive answer to the question raised by uh, uh, Fan So the idea that if you take K points in, in, in the boundary, uh, because here you see like the problem, everything happens on the boundary, right? Inside you are caloric. Inside this is like the heat equation with nothing, ut equal to Laplace u, okay? So you will not blow up, of course, on the boundary, right? You have to blow up, your blow up points have to, be, you will not blow up inside, sorry. Your blow up points have to, uh, have to be on the boundary, right? So basically like if you give yourself K points uh, on the real line, right? The boundary of the plane, and uh, uh, then you, you, for any sufficient small time, you can find a solution you not, uh, which blows up exactly at those K points. And how do they blow up? They blow up exactly in the same previous way as I was uh, uh, um, describing for the singularity analysis. They blow up like a nice 
harmonic map with free boundary plus this, all these bubbles. And here, here are the, the blow up rates. Okay. So here, omega, so uh, uh, it, it is like, uh, like uh, a stationary solution. So which is Laplace u equal to zero, u, uh, u of the image of the play of the, of the boundary of the plane is S1 and satisfying this, uh, boundary, this boundary condition. Actually, like with Vincent Millot, we classified completely this, uh, this, um, the, the degree one uh, solutions of this problem, okay? But this is like, so this is a, what I call a bubble is like an entire solution of the harmonic map equation, exactly how I, I, I call the bubble for, for that is, okay, in the classical case, or the bubble, my, my uh, bubble for Yamabe, right? When I take uh, zero here. <clears throat> so, and the way you construct it uh, is exactly, the way you construct this, uh, this, uh, this solution is uh, through also an inner outer parabolic uh, uh, problem. The thing is that, I mean, once again, the strategy is like that I described at the beginning is a pretty clear, right? You try to have like a good approximation and then you perturb by an inner problem, which is close to the blow point and outer problem away from the blow point. The crucial idea, the, I mean, the crucial technical difficulties are like to have a good linear theory because of course you have to take into account all the decays which are provided by, by uh, your bubble and so on. So, and in particular, depending on what spaces you are like solving your equation, you might not have enough decay. So if you don't have enough decay, you have to improve your, uh, your approximation and so on and so on. Um, so the thing is that the reason why we could solve uh, uh, the, 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 the question raised by Francois is the following, is that like uh, this equation that I just wrote is actually completely equivalent to this kind of weird equation. So if you are familiar with, with, uh, with uh, harmonic maps, uh, you, could, you can recognize uh, an harmonic map problem, which is actually a half harmonic map, which is introduced by Dalio and Riviere. But uh, basically like you can rewrite the, 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 the problem that I was mentioning into the like, you are considering the, the whole square root of the heat operator that you can define in Fourier Laplace if you want. And uh, equal, and this is this term comes from uh, the, um, <laughs> the nonlinear boundary condition. So somehow, like, uh, so you see, like, this is like a, the, the classical harmonic map flow, right? That was being considered like uh, using inner outer parabolic gluing by Davila, the Pino, and Way you get rid of the square root here. And here, all this integral disappears and, and you get gradient Q square U, okay? Here actually, like you have like, uh, this is the flow in between the two dimensional uh, uh, harmonic map flow and the flow actually which been introduced uh, by uh, Dalio and Riviere. So intrinsically, your problem is of non-local nature. And the reason why is just because like inside you are caloric, inside there is nothing happening. There's just a heat equation as far as blow up is concerned. But everything is on the boundary and the boundary condition is non-linear. The thing is that the techniques we've been developed uh, recently uh, to deal with non-local equations and in particular blow up theory for non-local equation, uh, you can look at papers of uh, SQG and so on, would, uh, would, um, would uh, allow to, to deal with this type of equation, which was not the case at the time, like, uh, like uh, asked this question in the main chain. So in, in the remaining time, let me just, um, just um, uh, uh, tell you like uh, um, how to uh, investigate this flow that I was mentioning here and more, more particularly the one which is associated to, uh, to, um, to, um, to the, 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 the problem I looked like uh, re related to the question of Chen and Min. So 
the idea that uh, that uh, is always the same as a startup is trying to understand the, the singularity analysis. So it's a system, okay? It's an harmonic map, so it's a system. So you cannot expect, in general, to have a smooth solution all the time, but only partially smooth. So basically, that uh, once again, the, the, the flow that we were considering was you take like the heat equation inside uh, sigma, let's take SL, uh, like a sphere, but you can do it for another manifold. And then, uh, and then you, uh, you consider this, this boundary condition, okay? So the usual way to construct weak solution of that is to do like a Ginzburg-Landau, there is a Z missing, uh, approximation. The reason why is that first, because this is very much related to physics. And second, this is like a very, I mean, it's very, as far as estimates are concerned, it's extremely uh, um, powerful. So basically you look at this type of regularization of the flow, okay? It's the gradient flow of this energy, formal energy. You can prove that the energy is, uh, I mean, the flow dissipates, okay? And you see here, uh, you have, like, as I was mentioning earlier, like, you have a non, your, your, your Ginzburg-Landau approximation is on the boundary, okay? So this is, like, really, like, you are looking, uh, you see, like, when epsilon goes to zero, if you want everything to be well-defined, you would like to convert to modulus u equal to one, okay? Uh, this is uh, exactly the free boundary, the, the harmonic map condition, constraint. So actually what we proved um, um, is that like whenever you take uh, uh, like a sequence of uh, weak solutions, right? You can prove of um, smooth solution of this flow. So I proved with, uh, with uh, Ali Aida, Antonio Segati and, and uh, Shang Yu Wang, we proved that you can find indeed like, like a solution of this flow, a weak solution of this flow, which comes from a Ginsburg-Landau limit and actually, which is partially regular in this sense. So there is a singular set, I should have called it differently than, than uh, sigma, which has finite parabolic measure, and uh, which is away from the singular set, okay? And of course, once again, the singular set in space and time is on the boundary in space. Away from that, you are nice, okay? And what you can prove is that the set of this, of this, uh, of this, um, um, the, the trace, sorry, of this solution is actually a distributional solution of, uh, of this equation. And uh, this equation, once again, if you remember what I mentioned earlier, is that exactly my, uh, my, um, the distributional, um, equation associated to this flow here. So you could think, okay, well, uh, this flow has been introduced in a long time, uh, uh, this harmonic map flow with free boundary, uh, <laughs> by Struve in particular, or even he used it like also to construct like this similar types of flow to construct CMC uh, uh, surfaces with free boundary and so on. But the thing is that um, mm, you can do several Gisborlando approximation. If you do this Gisborlando approximation inside, you will automatically uh, check the, this boundary condition. But somehow, when you have in mind like uh, this type of approach uh, that I was using, it's a much more natural thing to do the, 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 the Gisborlando approximation on the boundary because the, the, the harmonic map heat flow or even like the harmonic map equation inside, let me put, is just a standard harmonic map equation, right? This is like, if you forget the UT here, this is just a standard like harmonic map equation. We know how to deal with it, like using Gisborlando. Uh, approximation. So somehow it's much more interest. It's more interesting, it's, from my point of view, to look at what's happening really at the boundary, which is where all the effects are new for this flow. <coughs> Inside, it, it behaves like the free boundary, the classical harmonic map flow. So, um, so th th this type of of model. Is, uh, is, I mean, this type of Gisborlando approximation, which is extremely powerful whenever the target is, is, uh, 
is uh, smooth. Actually, when it starts being singular, this is another ball game. Uh, but actually, like uh, the main tool is uh, that you can prove for this flow the existence of homotonicity formula. So you can prove that this truncated energy, this renormalized re even, is uh, is uh, is actually like uh, like uh, decreasing. Uh, increasing, sorry, in in the radius. The fact that you have a monotonicity formula is saving uh, your life by uh, by uh, big time. And then the second thing that uh, that uh, you need to uh, to to get is so called uh, cleaning out lemma, or like uh, so. So basically, you sweep a mass. If you have like if, if the energy is small enough at around the point on the boundary, then you're going to be away from zero in modulus. So this type of clearing out is classical also in this Bolandau theory. So at the end of the game, what you have is that you can prove, combining that, that small energy regularity, which is a crucial, uh, crucial uh, lemma that you always want to prove when you want to prove partial regularity. If you have small energy or like whatever quantity, like in Kavarli, Nirenberg, whatever quantity is small, then uh, uh, in a neighborhood, okay, in a smaller neighborhood, you are actually smooth. And uh, the thing is that the difficulty here is that uh, uh, you have, well, basically a Lipschitz bound. And uh, the difficulty here is that usually this type of problem is of this type of Lipschitz, a priori Lipschitz bound, like for elliptic, for harmonic map, for elliptic or parabolic, is obtained through a, a Bochner type technique. You, you plug the density, you plug gradient Q square into the equation and you try to use maximum principle and small energy to, uh, to, uh, to, to do it, uh, to, to get like an a priori one independent of epsilon. Uh, you cannot do that. Uh, this is inoperable. Uh, it doesn't work whenever you have this system because your, your boundary is on, is on uh, your, 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 your nonlinearity is on the boundary. So you don't have enough terms uh, inside which is uh, to, uh, to reach this type of uh, argument. But anyways, when you do have that, you have like, like, uh, like you manage to have like, uh, to prove this type of partial regularity. Of course, here I took the sphere, but, uh, but, um, but uh, it works in any, for it, when the target is uh, any manifold, uh, smooth manifold, it doesn't change anything. So, let me just like uh, explain you why just the beginning of the bubbling of the, the, the construction of the, uh, the approximation in the case of the of the um, Yamabe flow, just so that you have an idea of what uh, it's a very natural thing. So basically, you take like a capital U. Uh, so I'm, uh, this is a, the first step of the construction of the bubbling solution. You take capital U, which is that the bubble, uh, the, bu what the Yamaha bubble solves the equation Laplace U plus U to the P equal to zero, okay? Of course, it's in Rn, okay? So you start like stretching it, okay? Dilating it and translating it by psi J and mu J. And you search for a solution which looks like this. The problem is that, of course, it's a solution in Rn, right? But you are in a bounded domain. So what you do, is that, so you're going to create an error. So to improve already the, the, an error is that you're going to project your bubble. So you're going to use the, the regular part of the green function, okay? So that it satisfies exactly the boundary condition. So then the theta j, which is like a, a give a natural better approximation than this one, but this is still not enough because when you compute the error, actually it's still too big. And this is where you're going to have to start uh, uh, improving the error by uh, uh, adding terms so that like uh, you can kill uh, the, the, the large uh, error. So it's pretty uh, technical, but the idea really is based uh, on, on the fact that at the end of the game, you write your equation this way and you have two systems 34 and 35 here so it's complicated to write and you have to solve them uh, like uh, like uh, separately but i mean the, the the initial idea is very uh, 
is very simple. And once again, the type of estimate, let me, let me put just a lemma and then I'm done. The type of estimate that you want um, is uh, always this type of to solve uh, uh, the inner problem is always this type of, uh, of uh, pointwise estimate. That's why you cannot have, uh, uh, so uh, let me write it here. You cannot have, uh, uh, you cannot use this type of technique for dispersive equation because you don't have decay for dispersive equation. So you have to like change completely. So of course there are all the techniques by uh, Raphael and Merle uh, uh, using coercivity estimates, but it worked very well for, for, the, for the dispersive equation. It's not the case here for 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 well, we cannot use this technique this parabolic gluing uh for this equation so i think i'm going to stop here i'm already like over time thank you for, for your attention thank you very much it was a very nice talk uh, i really liked it um are there questions or comments from the audience yes there's if possible oh, Hat this is Hatem speaking okay oh, yeah. hi Hi, Yannick. Yeah, very nice talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in fact, I, I have a small uh, question uh, related to, to your first theorem about the fast diffusion. Mm -hmm. If I remember well, you, you, you have some given points, Q1, Qn, and then you have a condition on uh, some matrix which should be definite uh, positive. Mm -hmm. uh, to what extent is this condition uh, necessary, in fact? Okay, so this is a good question. The thing is that when you reduce, when you have the reduced equation, yeah. I'm always able, I'm, uh, uh, so, so the reduced equation, like when you have reduced everything to checking that the parameters all match when you, uh, when you uh, the only way to solve this equation is uh, using this, con I mean, this condition is ensuring that this equation will be solved. If it's necessary, I don't have a counterexample. So, okay. so because yeah. like you have like so, if it's necessary, I suspect that this is necessary. But but uh, uh, the, I I I don't know if it's an if and only if. If you have if you can prove like such statement, the equation to 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 uh, to. Um, you know, this is when you are like looking at blow up, for example, for the supercritical mm. uh, super uh, problem, the elliptic one it, with a, the Coron problem with the hole, you know, you put a, a domain, you take a hole and you try to blow up at two points, you know, like you, we know how, where the two points have to be located so that indeed you can, but we don't know if it's a myth and only if, I mean, it's very hard to, uh, to, to have this type of uh, statement. As far as I know, this is like, uh, even with two points, it's very uh, like complicated. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, just as a comment, I think that this is really related to, to the geometric uh, nature maybe of, uh, of the flow. Uh, for, as a matter of fact, for example, for the semilinear heat equation, at least in Sobolev subcritical uh, mm -hmm. exponent, or maybe this is not uh, uh, necessary. We can, for any given points, have bl uh, a blow up solution which blows up exactly on, at uh, yes. those points. Yeah, yes. with no, no, no condition on the location of, of the points. Or the subcritical, right? For, at least, yeah. But l l let me think a little bit. I think that for the what you call the Fujita uh, mm. equation, even for supercritical, we can construct okay. solution. Okay. Yes, with no with no uh, condition. So yeah, this yeah. condition somehow is is maybe related to some geometry or I don't know yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 I, I, yeah, yeah. Okay. I agree with you. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you, but okay. I have no definite answer. I think it's a very interesting problem. But, uh, okay. but uh, okay. yeah. thank you, thank you, Yannick. Thank you. Very nice talk. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank Are you, there Josh. other questions? Or comments? May I have two questions? Yes, please, Vanjian. Yeah, thank you for your interesting thoughts. So, may I have two questions? So, the, what, the first question also related to the plot point that Hatam mentioned. 
But uh, my, my question is the following. So what, have you considered the case where there are QI or QJ is at the same? And I guess that when we have the K, Q, I, and Q, J are the same, the matrix you define will be, will be, have a determinant will be so infinite or singular. But do you so mean like have blowing, a, blowing up at one point or blowing up, doing a bubble tower? I think you mean- And a bubble doing, tower, but the Q, I, and Q, J will convert to the same point. No, ah. like a collision, yeah. Yeah, 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 collision, oh, okay. No, this I, no, 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 this I, I have no idea about that. Like, I like, yeah, for my, yeah, for my understanding that, you know, from your definition of the matrix, so when Q and Q trace convert to the same point, so your matrix is not well defined because the determinant mm -hmm. will, will be singular. Yeah. And yeah, also yeah. The, 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 the function edge, so in the lab that, uh, the, the Poisson question also singular. Mm -hmm. And, but uh, you have any idea, to, uh, is it work or your technique will work for the QI and QJ can work at the same point? Or, I understand, like, like you, you are trying to, uh, to, uh, to have like some, okay. So the answer for, for this like Yamabe type equation, I've never seen that. Maybe, maybe Atem as a, as a, for the semi-linear equation, heat equation, there might be result in this, uh, like you have merging vortices, like or this type of thing, actually, uh, or collision as a, uh, but I have no idea because the, I, I agree with you that it, you have to change completely the technique because it cannot go this way because uh, you you, uh, you will not be able to solve somehow the, 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 the reduced equation as you were mentioning. So I don't know if it's known, if this type of phenomenon has been even like, uh, investigated in, a, in, a, in, a, in the case of the semilinear equation. I mean, there is like a system which is very famous for which has been investigated. This is like the end body problem, but uh, that you could, which is like, after all, like uh, some sort of discretized uh, version of all it. But, but I have no, I've, I, I'm not aware of any kind of uh, things like that for. Okay, yeah. okay. see. So my second question is uh, about a coupling system, the inner and outer solution. And, I, and from my understanding that the system is linked, the, the inner and outer is linked each other by the boundary condition when you put the cutter yeah. around the purple. Yeah. And how you manage uh, to serve at the boundary. So at the boundary, which the inner solution will be dominant or at the boundary, the outer solution will be dominant for your, in your technique? Like, okay, it, it, it depends, at the, at the boundary, the, the boundary of the domain, you mean? I mean that the uh, when you put a cut up around the bubble, so you will scale. Oh yeah, 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 no, no. Like, yeah. The cut up has to be adapted because like there is, there is always, so the cut off has some, I mean, Close to a blow up point, right? Uh, you, are, you, you, you are described basically at first order, okay, which might not be enough by a bubble, right? And it, the bubble is explicit. You don't need much actually uh, uh, as a, an explicit expression, just need to have, but you have some decay, right? At, at yeah. a given on annuli, for example, around the singularity, right? So you have to adapt the, the, the size huh, so that you can match actually, because the outer problem, gives you like, uh, so, so you have to match the power of capital R, you see what I mean? So, so, yeah, so, so, so you have like, because this is really like, a, once again, what I was like uh, emphasizing on in like, a, this is really like a pointwise construction. That's why it doesn't work for dispersive. It's really a pointwise construction. So basically you have to match the power of R you know, or like the dependence on R between the, the, the size of the inner region and the size of the outer region. It's exactly the matching asymptotics formally, right? But yeah. the thing is that like you have to adapt everything depending on your problem, right? And sometimes you might lose a log, <laughs> a log of R, but uh, you, can, uh, you can get better estimates in the outer to absorb the log. And, and so the, um, it has to be designed like according to every, uh, every uh, problem. So for example, in the case, uh, in the case uh, 
as I was mentioning, like uh, for in the in the case of the Yamabe equation, just the fact of projecting is not enough. You have to the error still is too big, and you have to improve again by adding an additional term, which is going to cancel the error on main order so that the error is smaller, and this type of construction. In the semilinear case, the semilinear equation, you would have like the same type of, uh, of thing, but you have to adapt the region, yes. Yeah, that, that's the way you can try to approximate solution, but uh, maybe my question is uh, would in the coupling system, the in and out does, we will have the boundary region, which is the cut up related to cut up curve around the purple. So I want to know that uh, your technique to manage the estimate at the boundary. I mean the, the boundary when you match the inner and outer, when you include the inner. And yeah, outer yeah, 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 yeah. So, so that the inner, the inner estimate will be dominant, or the outer estimate. Oh, inner, 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 inner. Okay, so it's meant that the, the outer solution will treat like a perturbation at the boundary. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you, Ayat. Okay, are there other questions? Okay, I think there are, you had enough questions for today. <laughs> uh, I was planning to ask, but uh, anyway, thank you so much, and uh, hope to see you soon. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Well, let's yeah. not wait eight more years. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye. Take care. Thank you. See you. Okay. See you tomorrow, everyone. Bye. 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 See you. Bye. 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 Bye.